now doctor this is the most important uh, this is the most important question once more two pages in ganong or shambhulingam shanmugam whoever the physiology uh, textbook regulation of respiration is one topic invariably there will be a question in the tomorrow's exam whether it is neat or appg doesn't matter once more we are back to the same story huh? whether god is there or not now comes doctor if you transect the brain stem above the pons above the pons kya hota any voluntary changes in the ventilation get affected suppose if you suddenly decided let me breathe more you can if you are going into a deep water swimming and you don't you want to hold breath you can what is that called as voluntary control on the breathing pattern this typically will be intact because it is the mid brain which decides so above the level of pons if you cut also still this will be intact voluntary control then uh, what else will happen the breathing the breathing will continue why breathing will continue because involuntary breathing which we all have is mainly controlled by the pontine medullary centers so if you cut above the level of the pons voluntary control is gone but the pons and medulla are intact no so that is the reason involuntary breathing uh, pattern is not uh, affected that is the uh, rhythmic ventilation continues and it remains intact then uh, you have some inputs between the brain stem and the peripheral and central chemoreceptors which are responsible for stimulating our ventilation for example we are acidotic our chemoreceptors will sense it and they will tell the brain stem and brain stem will increase the respiratory rate right so those things are basically also intact because they are also decided below the level of pons so the stretch receptors from the lung herring breuer reflex that will also be intact because they are all decided by medulla pons level above the level of the pons level what is uh, control voluntary control that is the only thing that will be lost if you transect it at the level of the pons is what you have to fundamentally appreciate so apneustic center pneumotaxic center all these things you need to review dorsal and ventral respiratory neurons what do they do which is important for inspiration which is important for expiration all those areas now doctor shoot me an answer <clears throat> two amino acids are encoded by only one codon each generally what is the rule one codon i mean one amino acid can marry any number of codons polygamy polyandry is permitted but only two amino acids lack this property of degeneracy only one codon one nation one entrance so tell me which what are those very good methionine tryptophan we get the answer from shankar shravya and uh, ritika everybody that's right methionine and tryptophan are the exceptions to the rule of degeneracy only one codon one amino acid okay now what happens when there is a sympathetic stimulation at the time of exercise there is an increased release of the sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium um, which will enable a faster muscle contraction which is required at the time of uh, the exercise is what need to be remembered what is first degree block prolongation of the pr interval on the ecg classically now whenever our respiratory muscles are all relaxed in which position the lung will be in you know what is meant by functional residual capacity typically the functional residual capacity is that volume of the lung at which the outward recoil of the chest wall is equal to inward recoil of the lungs and during that time there will be no respiratory muscles which are in active contraction 
and this typically occurs at the end of the tidal expiration you know tidal expiration means not a forced expiration normal inspiration normal expiration the tidal volume of 500 ml is there no the extremes of it that is tidal expiration at the point of the tidal expiration the respiratory muscles are not working during that time the outward pull inward pull are equal that's called functional residual capacity is the time where it typically happens now coming to the airway resistance coming to the airway resistance when is it lowest is an important question the airway resistance will decrease whenever the lung volume increase because of the subatmospheric intrapleural pressure what happens uh, with the subatmospheric intrapleural pressure when it increases it will increase the traction on the airways the diameter of the airways will increase and that will decrease the airway resistance is what i want to underscore to all of you <clears throat> now give me an answer doctor between these three what is the most severe form of mutation missense nonsense or silent yes who will give me the correct answer between missense nonsense and silent mutation which is the most severe form of mutation is nonsense more than missense or missense is more than nonsense yes everybody say missense uh the nonsense is more severe than the missense which is more severe than the silent what is the difference between the three missense means amino acid will be changed nonsense means it will lead to stop codon all together getting a stop codon is more severe than the changed amino acid is what you have to fundamentally remember <clears throat> now coming to brca1 protein what is its main role why a problem in that should lead to development of breast cancer is my question to all of you <clears throat> brca1 plays a significant role in the repair of the double stranded breaks is what you need to remember and uh, it is the loss of this mismatch errors which will be responsible for the breast carcinoma if there is a brca1 protein uh, error is what need to be basically remembered <clears throat> now coming to the fructose what is the importance of hexokinase hexokinase is more generic it can be able to phosphorylate any monosaccharide it can act on fructose to produce the fructose 6 phosphate is what i want to underscore to all of you <clears throat> just ask tell the varangal guys that uh, tomorrow we will change the ups eh? and uh, get the problem corrected hmm? so yeah now coming to the electrophoretic analysis when you have done you found that there's a decrease in beta chain compared to that of the alpha chain so uh what is the uh, underlying uh, point about it it is a problem of beta thalassemia which occur because of a mutation in the promoter of the beta chain gene is uh, the underlying molecular mechanism now coming to the protein metabolism what is the importance of uh, test sequence proline glutamine serine threonine sequence any protein which has got this pest sequence typically become more rapidly degraded not slowly degraded is what you have to basically remember <clears throat> now the beriberi is to do thymine deficiency thymine deficiency and thymine is an important coenzyme of the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is what need to be remembered now coming to the i am shooting you a question 
which you need to answer yes there is non homologous end joining is one of the ways by which the double stranded dna is repaired that is it brings together the two ends of the dna fragments if there is any error in this it leads to which genetic disorder error in the non homologous end joining is the underlying cause of which important chromosomal breakage syndrome otherwise which chromosomal breakage syndrome it is dr madhu proposes downs is it i'm i'm saying giving you another clue which chromosomal xeroderma pigmentosum is one proposal anything else anything else yes it is the ataxia telangiectasia me the main problem is the non homologous end joining in the double stranded dna is abnormal what are the other important dna repair mechanisms which get affected in various chromosomal disorders doctor nucleotide excision repair is the problem in xeroderma pigmentosum normally if you look at the basis uh base excision repair is another important reason where dna repair uh, uh, problems can occur and the mismatch repair is the underlying problem in the case of the hereditary non polyposis colorectal cancer any of these genetic mechanisms can be one of the favorite questions of the examiner what is the underlying genetic mechanism of each of the chromosomal breakage syndromes you have to be very very sure about hexokinase pyruvate kinase phosphofructokinase they are all considered to be the common enzymes which are involved in the regulation of the glycolysis is what need to be remembered <clears throat> thymine deficiency affects the transketolase levels as all of you know very well coming to the glycolysis regulation of glycolysis what is the effect of glucose 6 phosphate on glucokinase and hexokinase is an important question basically liver contains both hexokinase and glucokinase the glucokinase catalyzes the phosphorylation of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate and it is not inhibited by the glucose 6 phosphate that is the reason it will allow the glucose to be converted into glycogen fatty acids and cholesterol even if the hexokinase activity is being shut down that is a point of interest here differences between km value affinity types of monosaccharides broken by differences between hexokinase and glucokinase we have to be quite uh, clear and sure about now doctor coming to the cyanide ions they can typically affect the inhibit the oxidative phosphorylation and that can lead to the development of the lactic acidosis is what need to be remembered 